Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. Today we are discussing exactly what the title says, the most broken badges in NBA 2K20. But what I want this video to serve as, as the starting point for the discussion for how to balance the game for 2K21. So it's very important that you comment down below your opinion on what we talk about in this video. Also, if you could take two seconds and just hit that like button for me, it helps me out a lot. Hopefully we get this video to 10,000 likes. So let's get into it. On Twitter, I put out this tweet. I said, what badges should be removed for 2K21? I'll start the list. Number one, Pogo Stick. Okay, so I think Pogo Stick has to go. The reason being is it kills the skill gap. I followed that tweet up and I said, Pogo Stick completely removes skill and IQ from paint defense. Just spamming Y or triangle is something a three-year-old can do. So I don't know if you agree with this or not, but in my opinion, I understand in real life, some people are quick second jumpers. You know what I mean? They can jump and then they're able to, as soon as they touch the floor, spring back up. I understand the, the point of the badge, but for a video game, that badge completely removes any type of skill in terms of defending the paint. Positioning doesn't matter. You're almost better off being behind someone standing under the basket because you can just keep spamming Y and you guys know those contest animations you get from behind this year. That's the reason why you see people not even going up with standing layups anymore. Standing layups in this game are completely irrelevant because half the time they either get blocked or the other half of the time you're getting 100% contested animation. The only thing you see is uh, running layups. You'd never see standing layups in comp gameplay. All you ever see is Oh, I have position. I'm going to back out and do a post hook instead because this guy has pogo stick and he's going to get 100% contest. In my opinion, if you want a skill gap on defense, you have to get rid of pogo stick. But you guys can let me know what you think down below. So that tweet went crazy and got a bunch of replies and Stumpy ended up replying and saying quick draw. He thinks quick draw should be removed. So I understand both sides of it here and I'm not really sure where I stand. The first side is quick draw seems like a waste of a badge because we used to have jump shot creator. You could choose the speed of the jump shot in the jump shot creator and you're good to go. But on the other side of it, it does kind of make sense in terms of limiting builds that have very low shooting badges because if you don't put it on quick draw, your jump shot's gonna be very slow. Or let's say you made a build that only gets about five shooting badges you know, if you're going to spend two or three of those shooting badges on quick draw, that's limiting how many other shooting badges you can get, which kind of makes sense. If you've seen my video about the power of a 47 three pointer, if you haven't seen, it, I definitely recommend you go check it out. I'll leave the link in the description. But basically that video was saying even with a 47 three pointer, if you have enough shooting badges, you can green pretty consistently. What quick draw does is make you waste some of those shooting upgrades on speeding up your jump shot. So I understand both sides of it. Let me know where you guys stand on that one. The next one, I think this one's going to be very debatable in the comment section, but R2D2 Master responded and said Intimidator. Okay, so this one I'll address real quick. Intimidator, in my opinion, I'm not sure what I think we should do with it. I don't think we should remove it, but I think it needs to be reworked. My issue with Intimidator is that even if someone doesn't put their hands up, they don't even jump, they don't, you know, hold the right stick up to contest a shot. Even if they're just in the area, you see people missing dunks, missing layups, missing jump shots, just because someone's within a three foot radius of them, they don't. Even, they're, they might not even be facing the right direction, but just because they have Intimidator on Hall of Fame or on Gold, you see people missing layups, missing dunks, just because of that badge. That should not be a thing, but I feel it definitely should be something that helps you if you're contesting a shot or attempting to block a shot. I would definitely understand it in those situations, okay? Moving on, this is a bunch of them in there, so we're gonna address them one by one. Quill said, bailout, flexible release, steady shooter, and fancy footwork. So we'll start with the first one. You even got a reply that said, imagine thinking bailout needs to be removed. So there's two sides of this. First of all, that whole thread right there, people were commenting about how bailout is a realistic badge. You know, listen, Pogo Stick is a realistic badge too, but it lowers the skill gap. And that's where Quill's coming from on this. He's saying bailout is a badge that completely <laughs> bails out bad players. People that go up and they're about to take a bad shot, which should result in either a miss or in past 2Ks would result in a turnover because passing out of shots was very inconsistent in terms of, you know, whether it'd be a turnover or your teammate would be able to catch it. Now now you can just throw on bailout even just on bronze and i'd say nine out of ten times you pass out of a shot you're good to go never mind if you put it on gold or hall of fame you're going to be able to pass out of almost almost every single shot you you could possibly go up with so yes it's realistic obviously in real life if you go for a shot you can easily pass out of it but at the same time do we want a skill gap or do we want 
the most realistic basketball game possible. If we go with the most realistic basketball game possible, there's going to be a lot of stuff that's going to be tough to deal with on a video game. If we want a skill gap, then I think we have to lean towards either nerfing bailout or getting rid of it. Honestly, I don't know on this one. I, I don't know where I stand on this one in terms of bailout. I see both sides of it again, but let's move on. So the next one Quill said was flexible release. And again, this is leaning towards talking about skill gap. Okay, flexible release is essentially a badge that if someone mistimes their jump shot, not even a slightly, they have to shoot either an early or a late. Flexible release will help them make the shot. So obviously it's helping players that are really, really bad. It's helping players that cannot time their jump shot to save their lives. Flexible release is gonna be something that they put on to help them make more shots. So do we want to cater to the casual player? I mean, I'm sure 2K does because that's going to encourage players that don't play the game very often to buy the game because it's making it easier for them. But in terms of competitive gameplay, it's making it easier for bad players to compete with really skilled players. So flexible release. What do you guys think? Next up in that tweet from Quill was steady shooter. Okay, Steady Shooter, that's the badge I was using in my video talking about, uh, I think the title was Greening 100% Contested Shots on NBA 2K20, definitely a good video, you guys should go check that out, definitely crazy to witness if anything, but also a pretty decently well put together video if I do say so myself, but Steady Shooter, again, this is leaning towards skill gap, I mean, it allows you to make heavily contested shots, not only make them, it allows you to green heavily contested shots on 2K20. Do we want a badge like that in the game? Now, the one thing I will say on the other side of this argument is it penalizes, not penalizes, but it reduces the effectiveness of open shots. So there is something to balance it, but I don't know. Uh, do we want, do we want a badge that allows people to make red contested three pointers? You guys let me know in the comments. Last but not least from Quill's tweet, fancy footwork. Okay. Now fancy footwork. I've talked about hop steps. I've talked about this badge a lot this year, obviously because my main player this year was a slasher while I was doing my legend grind. Wow. This badge. And I called it before the game even came out. I called it in the prelude. Something had to be done about hop steps. And of course, nobody listened to me, but besides the point, Fancy Footwork is a badge that basically when you go to do a hop step, it will stun the defender, okay? Hop steps are already overpowered in general this year because it's tough to get body up animations on them, but the fact that there's a badge that allows you to stun the defender, like literally he'll be like, he won't be able to move for half a second while you do the hop step, which allows you to get an easy dunk or easy layup. So I don't know if it needs to be removed. I understand the badge, you know, making Euro steps and hop steps better you can have a badge that does that but to completely stun the defender from a hop step to me that doesn't make any sense if you rework the badge i don't think you need to remove it but definitely something needs to be changed the last reply i put in here wasn't even about badges he said everyone care about everything but the damn hop steps and that stupid baseline reverse layup we nerfed those it's all good and honestly he does have a point you can lose to complete trash cans on this game because they spam hop steps and they run on the baseline and do reverse dunks or reverse layups. Something about the reverses in this game, basically it makes you auto contest on the, the strong side of the hoop as the guy goes along the baseline and goes to the reverse side. It's like you have to stand on the baseline and like take a charge or get a body up animation. You can't actually like contest the reverse layup unless you come flying in and pressing you know pressing block to come get like almost like a chase down block but something about the animations i agree with him need to be reworked on the baseline or just the defense needs to be reworked on those reverse dunks reverse layups and also like we talked about the hop steps combined with fancy footwork like super duper overpowered and i mean we see all year people spam them but listen i tried to put in the most commented on the most liked replies in this video we talked about what did we talk about like seven eight maybe nine badges something like that but you guys in the comments keep the discussion going it's very important we get the discussion going not only on youtube but on twitter instagram all the platforms so that 2k21 can be the best game possible the most balanced skill-based game possible that's really what we want to get back to is when 
there's a skill gap. That's what all games are coming to these days. All shooting games, all, you know, sports games. We want a skill gap to determine, to differentiate new players from really, really skilled players, not just allowing casual players to be able to dominate just as good as someone who's really skilled at the game, man. But drop a like, subscribe if you guys are new. I appreciate y'all watching. I'm out. Peace.